Hey everyone, in this week's tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how to do loop exits for third party sensors such as the High Technicolor sensor. So if you haven't already guessed, this week's tutorial is more or less an extension of last week's tutorial, where this week I'm going to be teaching you how to do loop exits for third party sensors such as the High Technicolor sensor, which is of course of special interest if you're competing in WRO. Now the reason why I made this a separate tutorial is because there are some extra steps involved if you're using a third party sensor for a loop exit. The reason for this being unlike an EV3 sensor like the color sensor or the rotation sensor which comes built in with the EV3 software, a third party sensor is not going to have a loop exit case or a weight block case. So you can't just scroll over to the loop block or a weight block and select high technic color sensor from the drop down menu because it won't be there. A third party sensor is not included. You only get the yellow sensor block which will allow you to read the sensor. And because of this there are a few extra steps involved. But I'm going to show you how to use that yellow sensor block to make a loop exit case for your third party sensor today. So just like last week, I'm going to demonstrate this third party loop exit on a line follower because that's what I see requested most often from my viewers. Now what I said last week is that you're going to want two separate sensors, one to handle line following and one to handle the loop exit because if you try to do everything with one sensor, it's going to flip back and forth between two tasks frequently and it's going to make your line following pretty unreliable. So for this example, I'm going to line follow with the EV3 color sensor and I'm going to do the loop exit with a high technic color sensor. Now if you want to also line follow with a high technic color sensor, that's alright just as long as there are two separate sensors handling line following and loop exit. But I don't think it's necessary to show the line following with the, the high technic color sensor because that's not the focus of the video. We're just interested in doing a loop exit. Now as I said before, a third party sensor like a high technic color sensor doesn't have its own exit case. So you can't just input a high technic color sensor as you would with an EV3 color sensor. So there are a few extra steps involved. You're going to want to set your loop to a logic. Okay? And then you're going to take out your sensor block for whatever external sensor that you're using. In my case I said it's the high technic color. So I'm going to drag that out at the end of my program. I'm going to assume that you're going to want to measure some kind of color and you're using a high technic color sensor because it's outside of the range of color that an EV3 sensor can see. But we're going to set it to measure color and recall that the high technic color sensor outputs a color uh, as a numerical value. High Technic provides a color number chart, which I'm showing here, which shows you all of the different number assignments to the various colors. So you should use this chart to find which colors you're looking for, because the sensor doesn't necessarily speak in terms of red, green, blue. It'll assign each color a number, and you're going to need to find which color or colors you're looking for, and tell the program which number color to look for. After you found your colors and their numerical assignment, you'll need to program that into your loop exit. And we accomplish this using a compare block. This will allow us to compare the colors read by the high technic color sensor to a numerical value and output a true false value, which will then determine whether or not we're going to leave this loop. And the reason why we're comparing to a numerical value is, of course, the high technic color sensor assigns each of its colors a number. So you're going to take the output of this color sensor block and make that the A value, the first input of your compare block. And you can set this to equal to if you're using one color, or not equal to if you're using all but one colors, or the, you can use greater than, less than, and all of the variants if you're using a range of colors. And you're going to set your B value to whichever color number you're going to be reading. And this has values uh, that range from 1 to 17, but for the sake of this example, I'm just going to say color 4. And this can be any number you want. And this is going to react to whatever color is assigned to the number 4. And then lastly, you're going to take the output of this compare block and plug it into the condition of your loop. So what this does is the program is going to repeat until the high technic color sensor sees whatever color is assigned to number four and when it does see that color it's going to send a true signal which then exits the loop and executes whatever code you have after this so then you can build on more code after this and make a long chain of programming 
and this is how you program a loop exit for a sensor that doesn't already have a built-in exit case in a loop lock. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every week. If you have a suggestion for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.